Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. Mario has been the source of many trends, styles, great movies and of course characters. A lot of characters from the Mario universe get their own games, just not Waluigi because Nintendo seems to hate him. But the greedy green gobbler Yoshi, who started out as a trusty steed for Mario, was popular enough to get a whole bunch of games based on his fetish for licking stuff. So that's what we're looking at today, a bunch of games where you get to play as Yoshi, and some not so much. Now keep in mind this isn't every game, as I don't have them all, but it should be enough to keep some of you happy. So now, how about I shut up, you press that subscribe button, and we take a look at some games. We are going to start on the Game Boy with a game simply called Yoshi. When I first heard about this game a million years ago, I assumed it would be a platform game, but nope, it's a puzzle game. As with most puzzle games worth their salt, this one is very simple and easy to play. You control Mario, go figure, and at the bottom of the screen there are four plates. Various Mario themed creatures will then fall from the top of the screen and land on the plates creating stacks. Your job is to move around the stacks to match two of the same creature and make them disappear, and your overall objective is to clear all the enemies from the screen and just to move on. Every now and then though you get half and a Yoshi egg. These come in two varieties, you get a top half and a bottom half, these are very useful. What you want to do is have the bottom half of an egg as low down in the column as possible and then put a few enemies in between, it doesn't matter if they match or not. Then hopefully at some point you'll get a top half of the egg, put this on top and the egg will close up clearing anything in between the pieces, basically you want to make an egg sandwich. Oh and then Yoshi pops out and makes a little noise. As Mario you have to scroll along the bottom of the screen and you can only swap two columns at a time. You'll need to be quick as the game speeds up the longer you last and it soon gets pretty tricky. It's a fine puzzle game but not one that will keep you coming back like Tetris would. It looks alright, the sprites are all good enough but there's little in the way of animation or variety. So overall yeah it's fine but it's not really a game that I'd say you desperately need to go out and play. Yoshi was also released on the NES, where it's sometimes called Mario and Yoshi. It's the same game here and nothing's really been added, it all plays the same way. Of course it does look a little better with the added bonus of colour, and the music is a bit better as well, but the tune does drone on a bit, no matter which one of the three you choose, and that actually is the same with the Game Boy version, the music just isn't great, which can make a huge difference in a game like this. So yeah, this is another game that is fine, but not exactly a game you'll be rushing out to play anytime soon. Yoshi's Cookie, once again here on the Game Boy, is another puzzle game. Once again it features Mario and Yoshi, but this time they're running a cookie factory for some reason. You have a variety of cookies, each with their own toppings and patterns. The aim here is to make either every row or column the same cookie, and actually I really enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. To do the matching you move your cursor then hold the B button. While holding it down you can move that row or column up and down or left and right, letting you shift around the cookies. Mario and Yoshi will drop more cookies down, either from the top of the screen or from the right of the screen, but as long as you clear all the ones that are in the pile before these ones are attached to it, you can actually finish the level, which is of course done by clearing them all and your main objective. It took me a little while to get used to how you could choose if you wanted to do rows or columns, as sometimes you'll have a column that's five high, but the row is only two or three across, so you can try to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to make some small matches or fewer large ones. You can also press the A button to tell Mario or Yoshi to send in more cookies if you don't have enough to make a match. And that's really all there is to the gameplay. Again, it's a puzzle game and it's simple, but it is really addictive. I have to say, I had a hard time putting this one down. The graphics are basic but fine, and the music is quite annoying, but you can just turn that off and put some electric six on or something. Nintendo must have loved this one because it also got a release on the NES. The gameplay remains the same but there's been a few changes to the look of things. There's a few more cookie varieties thanks to the added colour palette, also for some reason you never see Yoshi here, only Mario. There's also a box on the right that fills up with the matches that you make of various cookies, but I'll be honest I don't really know what it does as I never filled it all the way. It's not a requirement, but I assume you just get bonus points if you make enough matches. 
Something I forgot to mention that also applies to the Game Boy version is that there are cute little cutscenes every 10 levels, where Mario or Yoshi are seen running around chasing cookie dough and things like that. They are cute and add a nice little touch to break things up. So yeah, again, this is a fun little puzzle game that will probably have you addicted more than you'd expect. And yes, there is also a Super Nintendo version. Boy, this game must have been popular. Once again, the gameplay is exactly the same, just match the cookies to make them all disappear. As you'd expect, the graphics here are much better, but well, actually, not by much, just by a fair bit. They've updated the layout, so both Mario and Yoshi are here, but the cookies here are the same, but maybe a bit shinier. The sound and music are also a little bit better quality, but the actual melodies on them haven't really changed and are not the best, so this is another game where you'll probably want to put your own music on. Again, this is a perfectly fine puzzle game that will keep you wanting to play for a while, but not exactly a must-have for the system. Here is Yoshi Safari for the Super Nintendo, and really I'm only including this so it's mentioned. It's a light gun game that uses the awful Nintendo Super Scope, sorry if you do like it, but come on, it's terrible. And I actually do have one in the attic of my parents' house, but I could never get it to work. Anyway, the game here sees Mario riding on the back of Yoshi in a rail shooter, and various Mario enemies will appear on screen, you just have to shoot them. I'll be honest, the game looks pretty damn fun, and I really would like to play it. It's just a shame that Nintendo had to make a stupid bazooka rather than a regular style weapon that you could actually use. The graphics are decent, and I'm sure if you have the means to play it, this will be a pretty fun game. But I personally have never actually played it, so can't really confirm that with my own opinion. And while we're looking at games I can't play, here is Yoshi Topsy Turvy for the Game Boy Advance. It does have various other names depending on the region you're in. This is a quirky game that has a motion sensor built into the cartridge. To control the game you actually need to tilt the Game Boy left and right to make Yoshi move in that direction. As I'm a scumbag here and I'm playing on an emulator, I can't do that, and this is as far as I can get. But I'm not fussed, as gimmicky games aren't really my bag unless they come with a guitar. The game got mediocre reviews and goes by a few different names as I mentioned, but from what I can tell, unless you find it for cheap, it's not really one you should be rushing out to buy. But again, I haven't played it, so you might want to check that for yourself. I did just want to include it here so it's ticked off the list. Alright, time for what you really want. Here is Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a really great platform game where you play as not one, but more than one Yoshi, and they set out to help baby Mario rescue his brother. They were being delivered by a stork when the evil bastard Kamek nabbed them and took them to Bowser's castle, except he dropped Mario who was found by a bunch of Yoshis. This is a pretty huge game with nearly 50 large levels to play through across 8 different worlds. They feature your usual platforming action, where you'll need to run and jump all over the place, but the game does add a few new mechanics that weren't seen in any other Mario game before. Firstly, you have Yoshi's Flutter Jump. By holding the jump button, you can flutter your legs, which gives you a tiny bit more height on your jumps and even lets you go that little bit further. This is actually a very important mechanic and you'll need to get used to how it works if you want to survive or dodge some of the tougher enemies. Yoshi also has a butt drop. By jumping and pressing down you can slam the floor with your ass. This can make things fall out of the sky, be used to kill enemies, or press switches or break blocks etc. And of course Yoshi can eat the many many enemies that are in the game and turn them into eggs. Not all enemies can be eaten, and not all enemies that are eaten turn into eggs, but thankfully you don't lose health or anything like that if you do try to eat something that you shouldn't. Yoshi just makes a face to say he doesn't like it, or sometimes he'll even turn into a drug fueled maniac. When you eat something, you can either spit it out or press down to make an egg. You can throw eggs to kill enemies, destroy certain parts of the scenery, activate switches, find hidden clouds and so on. A lot of the gameplay revolves around the use of eggs with later levels requiring some precise egg action, bouncing them off walls and round corners to hit switches. There really is a lot to the gameplay as well. Levels almost always add new things, be it auto-scrolling stages, ones where you transform into a vehicle like a helicopter or a mole-like thing that can dig, there really is a lot here and it's not a short game, it'll take quite a while to get through. Or sometimes you even need to control baby Mario after collecting a superstar and having him run around like a mentalist collecting things. 
Oh, and yes, I haven't even really mentioned Baby Mario yet. Many because I think we all know by now, he is almost always on your back. And if you take a hit, then he'll fall off and be in a bubble. You've got a short time limit in which to touch that bubble to get him back. If the time runs out, the enemies get to him and they take him away. You've got to restart the level, or from the checkpoint. If you take a hit when you don't have Mario on your back, you'll lose a life. And yes, he does make an annoying scream when you lose him that doesn't stop until you get him back, but it's really not as bad as some people make you believe. There's plenty of things to collect in the levels, mainly coins for extra lives, but there's also hidden red coins which are hidden among the regular ones, though if you're eagle-eyed you can spot them with their slight red tint. There's also five flowers in each level, as well as little stars which add to the timer for when Mario gets knocked off your back. You're scored at the end of each level based on what you collect, and there's even secret levels that will unlock if you do well enough, so you will want to get as much as you can, and luckily you can go back to replay old levels if you want to. Graphics-wise, the game is fantastic. It uses the 3DFX chip to create some really nice effects. Now, I'm definitely no expert, so I don't really know exactly what it does, but there's plenty of things that scale, rotate, and even a few polygons in here, so I'm assuming it does most of that. It has a really cool crayon style too that's just very appealing. Couple that with some great varied gameplay, solid control, and what is probably one of the most challenging games in the whole Mario series, and you really do have a special game here. I'd say this is a must-have. As it was such a hit, Yoshi's Island got a port to the Game Boy Advance. For the most part, it's basically the same game, with just some minor changes, basically to accommodate the smaller screen and different hardware. Things do seem a little more zoomed in, and that's because they are, so you don't get to see as much of the screen as you can in the Super Nintendo version. Some of the screens here have changed in fact, like the map and some of the little mini-games, to make them more suitable for a smaller screen, so again, nothing really major. As with a lot of the Game Boy Advance ports, the colours have been changed slightly to make it lighter. I believe this is because most models of the Game Boy Advance didn't have a backlight, so they brightened up games to make things easier to see in low-lit areas. I've got two Game Boy Advances and neither have a backlight, which kind of sucks. Thankfully, I have my DS, so just use that instead. But anyway, it's still a fantastic game no matter how you play it. I would say if you've got the choice, do play the Super Nintendo version as I think it is the superior one, but you still can't go wrong with this one. Over to the DS now for Yoshi Touch and Go. This game doesn't really have much of a story and is basically just one of those endless runner sort of games. It's got the style of Yoshi's Island and the game starts with baby Mario falling from the sky. Eventually you get to the ground and are caught by Yoshi which is lucky. The game then auto scrolls and you have to see how far you can make it without being hit, crushed, zapped, fired or whatever. But the whole game is controlled with the touch screen. You've got to draw clouds which act as paths, bridges or barriers. When Baby Mario is floating down, you can draw them to make him avoid enemies and collect coins. When you're with Yoshi, you can use them to make bridges over large gaps or to make Yoshi walk high into the air to collect coins or fruit and that sort of thing. You can tap on Yoshi to make him jump, so you can jump over most small gaps, but you can't control his speed so it's not always easy to judge the distance. There are enemies in the game and you can tap on them to get Yoshi to throw an egg and defeat them. You can carry up to 20 eggs at a time, and these can be replenished by eating the various bits of fruit that you find in the levels. But getting around the levels is actually really tricky, mainly because it just doesn't seem to work that well. As the screen is auto-scrolling, you often don't have enough time to plan ahead and make your next move. There are narrow places to get to that hold the best items, which I get are deliberately tricky to get to, but I ended up just getting stuck most of the time. Also, you can only take one hit before you die, and as this is an infinite runner game, you then just go back to the start. Well, actually there are a few checkpoints you can start from to be fair, but I still would have liked at least to take one hit before dying. Graphically, the game is fine, it's just sprites and nothing that will blow you away. But for me, the gameplay just wasn't very fun, and I didn't really enjoy my time with this one. It was an early game for the DS, but it really does feel like the sort of thing that should have just been a mini game as part of a different game, and not its own thing. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this one, but if you think it looks good, you go for it. Yoshi's Story for the Nintendo 64 is a fun little platform game that's also kind of strange for some reason, I can't put my finger on it. The Yoshis are having a good time thanks to their super happy tree, and yes that's what it's really called. Baby Bowser then gets jealous and uses his spell to transform their island into a pop-up book, because that'll teach them. 
Six Yoshis survive all this nonsense and set out to eat a bunch of fruit, which will then get them to the super happy tree and put an end to the tyranny of baby Bowser and his pop-up book shenanigans. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense, but who cares. The game is a 2.5D platform game and you make your way through various pages, where you just have to explore the levels that are split into a few different sections. These sections will loop endlessly until you find and eat 30 bits of fruit, which isn't that hard to do to be honest. Yoshi can do the usual running, jumping and butt dropping, and of course you have your flutter jump, but here it's a lot more vertical, helping you out if you miss time any jumps. You also have your eggs again of course, which here are just as useful as they have been in previous games. You'll use them to fight enemies, hit blocks, press switches, and burst the bubbles that are found throughout the levels that contain the fruit you need to eat. There are quite a few enemies in the game as well, and each world has a good selection of its own unique ones which is always nice, and you also have some cool boss fights to contend with. Yoshi is no wimp though, and can take a few hits before he dies. Something that is really nice touch is that the music gets more and more sad the closer you are to dying, I really like that. You can get health back by eating fruit, as well as the various flowers and things that you find in the levels. And what's cool is that each colour Yoshi has their own favourite fruit and you get different amounts of health depending on what you eat. What is a bit of a shame is that the Yoshis are all exactly the same, except for their colour. It would have been cool if maybe they had their own little abilities. The exception to the fruit rule is the big green melon. All the Yoshis love this and will get loads of health for eating it. Also you get different amounts of points from the fruit, and depending on what score you end the game with you get a different ending. By pressing the handy L button on the controller, that will let you see how many fruit you've got left to eat, and there's plenty hidden around the game as well. Holding the R button lets you sniff, and doing this helps you find some of the hidden fruit. If you want a perfect game, I think the aim is to eat 30 of the green melons on every level, and this isn't easy, you'll need to explore a lot. The game is pretty short though, and can be beaten in under 2 hours, however there is a lot of replay value here. Each page of the book has four levels to choose from, but you only get to choose one per playthrough. To unlock the other choices, you also need to find the big red hearts in the stage before, and then the new levels will appear on the stage select screen on the next level. So you'll need to explore every inch of every level and replay the game a good few times if you want to see everything. Also, there are two secret colour Yoshis hidden in the game, a black one and a white one. I used to know exactly where these were, but I couldn't remember this time round. They are only available in a couple of levels, so you will need to do a lot of exploring to get them. The game looks decent, but not amazing. I am playing it on real hardware here, and I do really like the pop-up book aesthetic, and the pre-rendered characters do look decent with good animation, but they're definitely showing their age with some jagged edges here and there. Overall though, I do really enjoy this game. We bought it when it was first released, and I found it fun then, and it's still kind of fun now. It's a nice easy playthrough, but the sort of game that you will come back to every now and then when you want to check out some of the new levels. Definitely recommend it though if you do have an N64. Skipping forward a bit now to the Wii U for Yoshi's Woolly World. The story here is pretty much the same as every Yoshi game, baby Bowser and his faithful minion Kamek are being dicks. This time round, Yoshi's world is entirely made up of yarn, because Nintendo had a real thing for yarn and string around this time it seems. Thanks to this, it's easy for Kamek to turn the Yoshis into balls of yarn and scatter them across the world. So the Yoshis that haven't been transformed set out to find them and put a stop to Kamek and baby Bowser once again. As with most Yoshi games, this is a side-scrolling platform game, playing a lot like the ones we've already seen. Yoshi can walk, run, jump, flutter, butt drop and so on. And you have your eggs, which are actually balls of yarn in this game, not eggs. But you'll once again be using them to throw at things and defeat enemies, hit switches, smash certain things and so on. You explore a hub world, which is a basic 3D area, and it's here that you can choose from the levels or bonus stages that you want to visit and have unlocked. The levels are filled with your usual platforming fare, and there's plenty of enemies in the stages too that you can eat to get more wool. There's also gem things that you'll need to collect. Beating levels and finding enough of the secret items within them will unlock badges which give you various perks, like being able to skip a level, more powerful yarn balls, better jumps and that sort of thing. But these all cost gems to use, so you'll need to save up if you want to be able to use them within a level. These badges are never required, but will help make things easier, or some are just for fun and make silly things happen. There's five big yarn balls in each level to collect as well. Getting all of these will reassemble the Yoshi that was transformed by Kamek, and then you get to play as them which is nice. These ones often have crazy designs looking like familiar characters or things from in the game. And there's also just regular coloured Yoshis that you can choose. They do all play the same though, so it's just about which one you like the look of best. 
The levels are all pretty fun. They are quite long, and in fact some might be a little too long, but still fun. They're packed with hidden secrets where you might need to push something, lick something, or just walk into a random wall. And finding all the items on the level can definitely be tricky if you're a completionist. Something that we have to mention are the graphics, which really are outstanding. Everything looks like it's been crocheted by your nan, and it really does look fantastic. It's also bright and colourful with awesome designs in the levels and characters, and I absolutely love how the game looks. And there's something just about the way that even the ground sinks in a little when you're walking around or standing still that's just super charming. It all runs very smoothly too, and the animations are really great, giving everything a ton of character. The sound and music are all very good as well, and I do especially like the music here, which has some really catchy tunes. Now, the game is probably aimed towards a younger audience, and it's not particularly difficult, but it's still really fun to play, and definitely a game you should own if you have a Wii U. And now we've got one more Yoshi game to check out for the Nintendo Switch, but I don't have one of those, so make sure you join my Patreon so I can save up for one. Thankfully, I have friends in high places, so here is Grim to tell you all about it. There's a time when a game feels like the successor of another, or better. That's how you could perceive Yoshi's Crafted World. It feels like Yoshi's Island 64, and then some, while taking an arts and crafts approach. Upon jumping in the first time, you can choose from classic mode or mellow mode with the latter giving Yoshi wings to fly. Clearly meant to be an aid to any elderly or young players who need help. Now for some exposition. The Yoshis being the ever peace-loving creatures of the Mario universe, they are once again thrust into a conflict they didn't start but most certainly end. Thanks to Bowser Jr. trying to steal their Sun Dream Stone with the aid of Kamek, the Yoshis fling the stones to the wind. What follows is a full 40 levels of creativity, such as trains made out of everyday items like boxes and empty paper rolls, or set pieces made out of paper plates, cans, and many more real life items. Shy Guys make a great return with their classic charm and rocking many outfits. Alongside them, there is Piranha Plants, Bert the Bashful, Blargs, Goonies, Bullet Bills, Koopa Troopas, Little Mausers, Cheep Cheeps, Monty Moles, Nipper Plants, Boos, Claw Daddies, Flutters, Low Marchers, Lungfish, and Maki Makis, and so many more. Some notable highlights are having a rumble down at the docks, or visiting the ocean floor, controlling a giant mecha Yoshi, and every boss fight is a delight and fun experience. After you decide on which color Yoshi is your favorite, you embark on a mission to collect all the stones, and you help some friends along the way learn how to smile. Featuring a classic staple of Yoshi's Island with red coins and finding smiley flowers for those who love collectathons, or finding items for your robot friends and helping Poochie find his pups in a reversal of the stages. Complete with many boss battles and an epic showdown, plus a slot machine that uses in-game coins to unlock adorable costumes, this won't be a game you will want to miss out on. This has been Grim from the Lost and Gone Podcast where I cover unreleased media like the California Raisins unreleased NES game and the failed port of Resident Evil for the Game Boy Color. Available anywhere podcasts are and will be. Come check it out. I guarantee you'll laugh and have a good time. So there you go, a bunch of Yoshi games. They're a bit of a mixed bag, but I'm sure there's something for everyone. Which one is your favourite? As always, let us know in the comments below. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Grim for offering to help me out and providing all his own gameplay footage. It was a great help, so make sure you check out the Lost and Gone podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All links are in the description below. On screen now, you can see where you can follow me, so why not do so? I've got loads of great content for everyone to enjoy. And now, all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.